The events unfold in the Somali basin, on a long-distance vessel. A man named Engel hears the alarm, but before he can do anything about it, he takes a pendant that is very dear to him. Everyone on the ship panics, but Engel remains calm. It turns out there has been an accident on the oil pipeline. If it's not fixed, the entire pipeline will be shut down. The superiors instruct Engel to take a team of divers and descend to the depth to fix the malfunction. Engel doubts this is a good idea, as a storm is approaching, but there is no choice. As instructed, Engel took on a young guy named Jones, who had never dived to such a great depth before. Mitchell and Hurst are also part of the team. Alcohol is banned on the ship, but Hurst ignores the rule. Before diving, Jones called his wife Lisa and told her that he would come home later than planned. Lisa is very worried about him, as they are expecting a baby. The team is preparing to dive and has checked the hatch for tightness and the pressure inside the bathyscaphe. Within an hour, the team will need to descend to the required depth. The bathyscaphe detached from the ship and began to gradually descend to the bottom. Mitchell controlled this process, monitoring the instruments and transmitting all the readings to the ship. Finally, the capsule reached the ocean floor. The divers helped each other put on their diving suits and left the bathyscaphe through the hatch to start repairing the pipeline. Jones, who was responsible for communication with the ship, remained in the capsule. After a quick diagnosis, the divers understood that a passing barge had hit the pipeline with its anchor, damaging it. They immediately got to work. Meanwhile, Jones was watching marine wildlife through the porthole. It was a fascinating sight. Then while the others were welding the pipeline, Jones pulled out a photograph of himself and his wife. Suddenly the capsule shook. The divers, who were attached to it by ropes, dropped their welding tools. Jones tried to keep calm and maintain communication with the ship. Hurst, who realized that this happened because of the storm, decided to return to the bathyscaphe. Jones panicked and told Hurst that communication with the surface was lost. Hurst radioed to his comrades to return to the capsule immediately. They having finished their work, did so. There was still no communication. The guys decided to ascend to the surface before the storm got worse. But it immediately became clear that something was wrong. The capsule could not stabilize, and the GPS signal was gone. Suddenly the bathyscaphe began to fall. The altitude was rapidly lost until the capsule was again at the bottom. The guys were concussed and disoriented. Due to the sudden pressure drop, Jones felt unwell, but his comrades quickly brought him to his senses. Engel decided to descend into the water to assess the damage to the bathyscaphe. It turned out that the damage was not severe. But there was still no communication. Mitchell urges everyone to remain calm. He is confident that they will be rescued at the earliest opportunity. However most likely, this will happen when the storm ends. Hurst found blankets and first aid kits, but there are no life suits in the capsule. This won't be a problem as long as the heating system is working. Meanwhile, Engel decided to check the cable rope and found that the ship to which they were attached crashed and was also at the bottom. The entire crew perished. This means that there is no help to expect from anywhere. The guys in the bathyscaphe were nervous, waiting for news. Finally, Engel returned and informed his comrades that the ship had sunk. At first they didn't believe him because it seemed impossible. But soon it became clear that Engel was telling the truth. The guys were alone at the bottom of the ocean. There is silence between them, no one knows what to do. Mitchell believes that the ship managed to send a distress signal, so a rescue will arrive soon. However, Engel does not share his optimism. Moreover, there are many pirates in the Indian Ocean. The guys started arguing. Engel was the only one who didn't believe that someone was looking for them. In his opinion, everyone doesn't care about them if the management sent them to the bottom of the ocean in a storm. Mitchell however is confident that everything will be fine, and again urges everyone to remain calm. They have nothing left to do but sit and wait. Oxygen from the damaged cylinder is rapidly depleting. Meanwhile, Mitchell was able to establish their approximate coordinates and ordered Jones to send a distress signal. Engel suggests releasing part of the oxygen out of the capsule to float to the surface, but Mitchell considered this a bad idea because the bathyscaphe may get damaged due to the sharp pressure drop. Suddenly oxygen began to decrease at a colossal speed. The guys started to panic, looking for their protective masks. Finally, the oxygen level stabilized, but there was very little left. Engel still proposes to raise the capsule to the surface, while Hurst suggests going to the sunken ship and find oxygen cylinders. Mitchell has not changed his opinion, believing that they just need to wait for help. Jones caught some signal. Mitchell asked for help, but it was useless because they made contact with a Chinese ship. Suddenly the connection was completely lost. It became clear that Engel was right. If they don't do anything, they will never be rescued. Mitchell and Hurst went down into the water to check the oxygen cylinders again. They cannot afford to lose more air. Meanwhile, Engel remembers his beloved Emily. These memories hurt him. 
Jones still doesn't want to believe that they have been abandoned to their fate. Suddenly Mitchell fell, and hitting lost consciousness. He was rapidly losing oxygen. Hearst tried to carry him away, but Mitchell's cable got hooked. Engel came to their rescue, and without his diving suit. Engel knows how to keep control in critical situations and maintain sanity. In the end Mitchell was rescued. He blames Hertz for panicking and nearly causing their demise. According to Mitchell, it's all due to Hertz's alcoholism. Engel again proposes to raise the capsule to the surface. However, Mitchell is still not ready to take such a risk. Hertz recalls Jones's father, who was also a diver and drank a lot. Hertz has a son, but he hasn't seen him in many years because he thought having a family was too difficult for him. Jones doesn't want to repeat his fate. The guys have nothing left to do but wait in silence. Mitchell is still making desperate attempts to communicate with anyone, but all he hears in return is silence. The guys noticed Hertz's absence, but it was already too late. He had gone down into the water and intended to find the ship. Mitchell ordered him to come back, as it was too cold in the water, but Hertz didn't listen. Because of hypothermia, Hertz started hallucinating. His comrades couldn't help him, as he was already too far away. Engel suggests disconnecting Hertz from the oxygen. He is now on the verge of unconsciousness and is consuming three times the normal amount of air, reducing the chances of the others to be saved. However, Mitchell refused to do so. While the guys were arguing, Jones did as Engel suggested. All he wants is to get back to his pregnant wife. Hertz was left at the bottom of the ocean, just short of the oxygen cylinders. Mitchell is praying because he doesn't know what else to do. Jones feels worse and worse, slowly panicking. Mitchell advised him not to lose faith. Jones only thinks about his wife, who will be left all alone if he does not return. Mitchell misses his family very much too. Suddenly the heater is broken. This means it will soon become cold here. Fortunately Jones was able to fix it. There is only an hour's worth of oxygen left. Mitchell wrote a farewell note to his wife, apologizing for not quitting his job, even though she constantly told him to. Engel also had a beloved, but he lost her. Suddenly a ship contacted the crew. It turns out that the Chinese vessel, which had previously intercepted their signal, got in touch with them. At the same time, the guy's employers didn't inform anyone about the incident. Rescue will come, but without exact coordinates, it will take several hours. Mitchell realized that Engel was right. The employers left them to their fate. Engel said he had an idea. There should be spare oxygen tanks in the pipeline compartments, and if they find them, they can mix it with the remaining helium, which will give them extra time. Mitchell thinks there is little chance. They drifted several miles, so the pipeline is already far away. But there's no choice anyway. Engel descended into the water in search of the pipeline. Finally he found it, but there was not enough length of the rope to get close to all compartments. The heating system broke again, so Engel began to freeze. Despite this, he refused to return. In one of the compartments, Engel found an oxygen cylinder. He had to detach the cable rope to get close enough. The communication was lost. Mitchell urgently dove into the water to assist his comrade. There was nothing at the end of the rope. Suddenly Mitchell saw Engel at the bottom. He was unconscious, but there was the cylinder in his hands. While Mitchell dragged his comrade and the cylinder to the capsule, Jones was on the verge of fainting due to the lack of oxygen. Finally, the divers returned. While Jones was connecting the oxygen cylinder to the air supply system, Mitchell tried to resuscitate Engel, but to no avail. Suddenly Jones saw Engel blink. The guys quickly put an oxygen mask on him. At that moment, Engel was recalling the day he lost Emily. Now the guys have two more hours. Soon the search team contacted them. The problem is that they do not know their exact coordinates and are not receiving a signal from the beacon of their capsule. So two hours might not be enough for the search. Jones suggested detaching the beacon from the capsule and making it to the surface. Then it would transmit the signal again. Engel and Mitchell thought this was a good idea. Mitchell decided to do this, as Jones had never descended to such a depth before. Before doing this, Mitchell is thinking about his family. He regrets not quitting diving earlier, as his wife had asked. Engel also remembers his beloved. He wanted to marry Emily, but the accident dashed all their future plans. Their car fell into the water. Engel survived, but Emily did not. That fateful night, he had no choice but to open the car window to swim to the surface. Now Engel hopes that Mitchell will return. When the rescue ship entered the signal reception radius, Mitchell dived into the water to detach the beacon from the capsule. Mitchell is quickly losing strength. He detached the beacon from the capsule, but could not activate it, so he took off his gloves. Suddenly something stung Mitchell, causing him to drop the beacon. He was surrounded by dozens of jellyfish. Mitchell had no other choice but to detach the cable rope from himself, otherwise he would not find the beacon. Engel begged him not to do this, but Mitchell did not listen. 
he managed to activate and launch the beacon to the surface, but due to hypothermia, he started to lose consciousness and consume a lot of oxygen. Engel ordered Jones to disconnect Mitchell from the oxygen, but Jones had a panic attack. He was screaming that he would never see his wife again. Engel barely brought Jones to his senses, while Mitchell was slowly falling to the bottom. The surviving guys have nothing left but to wait. Jones doesn't want everything to end like this for them. The rescue ship contacted them again. They reported that they caught the beacon signal, but it will take at least an hour for them to get there and pull out the capsule. The guys don't have that much time. Engel said they would release all the oxygen from the bathyscaph and surface. The chance of survival is small, but they have no other option. Engel did everything necessary. The capsule began to slowly surface, until it got caught on a shipwreck with a rope. The guys could try to dive together and surface, but they only have one helmet. Engel wants Jones to do this. He will divert all the oxygen to him. In this case, the entire capsule will be flooded, but Engel is ready for this. Engel gave Jones Mitchell's note to pass it to his wife. Jones demands from Mitchell to explain why he is sacrificing himself. Engel confessed that on that fateful day, he could have saved the culprit of the accident, but deliberately did not do so. However, Engel had no idea that the man's son was also in that car. Because of Engel's inaction, he also deceased. That is exactly why Engel wants to atone for his guilt. This is Jones's first dive. Engel kept in constant communication with him and instructed him. Jones thinks he won't make it, but he must move forward. Due to a sharp pressure drop, Jones felt pain in his joints, but Engel assured that this is normal. The capsule was slowly filling with water. According to the instructions, Jones removed the helmet, and despite the fear, surfaced. The rescue ship was already nearby. The capsule continues to fill with water. The rescuers pulled Jones out of the water. Upon learning of this, Engel was relieved. He understood that this was the end, and took Emily's pendant out of his pocket. With nothing more to lose, and Engel left the capsule in an attempt to resurface, but of course he could not do it. The elements of the ocean were stronger than he was. Some time later, Jones returned home. He and his wife already had a child, but Jones could not recover from what had happened. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel not to miss more exciting new products. Also the authors will be pleased if you leave your opinion in the comments.